Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com cock a doodly doodly doom <laughs> a former secret service I forget his title, but man, guy coordinating events like that. And what he's telling me is what I think you have been saying and what a lot of people have been saying. But I, I think you've added some more stuff, so we'll get into that. So what I've learned so far, Dallas, is that most people who are giving expert analysis on this Trump assassination attempt are saying that there was a definite lapse in coverage. So what have I, I've learned from people who have done this before now is that there should have been somebody covering that roof. Um, that's the covering the building from the inside is not the first choice they would go through. Um, there should have been a team of people watching for suspicious people on the ground. And I don't know if you've seen yet, there's now footage of the shooter walking around uh, about an hour or two hours earlier. And I think the third thing was the communication, which is something I want to ask you about as well. But in your mind and in your experience, is, is it accurate to say that, you know, there's a lot of gaps here in, in security, or is this a situation where, Something is going to go right 99 times or 999 times out of a thousand. We're just seeing the time that it doesn't work. Uh, in my, no, in my opinion, there's there's massive gaps in security. I think um, I, I don't think this is the unit to assume things are going to go right. Yeah, and and that's what I was told. And this is something that, you know, you try to prevent before it happens. So another thing people are saying is, is the communication. Where is the communication? And what I was told is that there's a team in place, right, from every form of law enforcement that's involved. And we've seen these two-minute videos happen where they line up, you know, the shooting with, uh, with the video feed. And you had said in a video of yours that's going wild right now, that you think that probably there was some sort of notice or help or something like that. Do you want to expand on that? I know you've probably answered this question, but uh, I've watched a lot of coverage in the last 24 hours of people condemning other people for suggesting, you know, literally the word something or so the idea that something must have happened or, you know, calling people conspiracy theorists. What, it, what would you think <coughs> is your best guess of the reason why there is such a lapse in protocol, I guess you would call it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've actually steered a little bit away from speculating on why I think it is. I just, I believe that because I'm familiar with this kind of stuff, like I, I was a sniper in a counterterrorism unit for a lot of years. We did close protection. We did close protection for our country's leader, the prime minister. Uh, I'm, I'm trained in close protection. I'm trained in surveillance and counter surveillance and sniping and counter sniping. This is something I'm very familiar with. And it's, it's, this is beyond just a lapse in security. This is beyond just like a small gap was not being watched. This is the closest building to where the former slash potentially future president is going to be speaking. It's within 150 yards, which is an extremely easy shot to make, even with minimal amounts of training. There was a ladder, and I've heard mixed stories on where it came from or how it got there or if he carried it doesn't matter, a ladder onto a rooftop that was not secured. That close to where uh, Donald Trump was speaking. It makes absolutely no sense. And to just think that on that random day, the kid's like, okay, today I'm going to drive my van. I'm just going to see if I can walk over somewhere. Oh, a ladder. I'm just going to see if I can get on the roof really close to where the... And all of these things just work out. 
when the police and the secret service and all these tactical professionals are on the ground, it doesn't make any sense. And so the video I made that went kind of crazy is just me saying that I believe based on my life of experience in this world, uh, in this particular world, I mean, in this realm that he had help from somewhere. And again, I didn't point fingers at an agency or an organization or a political party, but the amount of people involved in this, even from like you think town levels, like whose land is it? Did they need to lease it or rent it from someone? Did they have a heads up? Whose land is the adjacent land? Did they need to, who knew the plans prior to it happening? Was it negligent police force or did somebody turn a blind eye? There's just, there's a, there's a, a huge list of people that it could potentially be. The only thing that I said in that video is, I believe that he had help. I don't think that just this 20 year old wandered up to a roof one day that the president was speaking and decided to let rounds go. And he just did it all on his own. Yeah. I think it's normal to ask these questions and a lot of the coverage I'm seeing, especially, I, you know, I watched that video you posted about Dan Crenshaw, whom um, I think if you knew more about him, you might understand why he's asking those questions. And I don't mean that in a particularly good way. Why do you think that people, not just himself, but other people are quick to jump on? Well, you need to wait until this full investigation is done before you ask any questions. You need to, you know, be very careful about who you're blaming. You need to not speculate. Why do you think people are jumping to that? Well, I think the way I see it is most people that jump to that are some type of person in the news or some type of person in politics. And in my experience as a 41 year old man living on planet Earth and I live in Canada and we have the same problem. The news lies to you and the government lies to you. And that's not a conspiracy. That happens all the time. I've seen it firsthand. I was overseas deployed. The stories coming back home were not true. The politicians were lying. The news was lying. I saw it again in the last few years. We just we see it over and over. So. It's always or seems to always be someone that is either a big fan of the politician speaking or the news channel speaking. And they're saying, well, let's wait to get the truth from the people that always lie to us. Um, and again, I, I wasn't pointing a finger at anyone in particular. I'm just saying, look, this is an area that I was previously an expert in for quite a while. Um, and I actually spoke to a lot of guys that I worked with <laughs> that had the same opinion. Um, but yeah, so I think there's there's pushback when the people that lie to you constantly are waiting to say what they are going to lie to you about, in my opinion. I What I see is a lot of... What I don't understand, I should say, is along the lines of what you're saying. You know, It became pretty clear to me um, within the first couple of months of the Ukraine stuff. And I, what I'm trying to say is event after event, people are just believing the narrative as... It is put forth by a massive swath of the media and politicians. And it's hard for me to conceive why people keep, you know, not necessarily, I guess you could say falling for it. I guess that's what I'm really saying. Why do you think people keep going for that again and again? Is it, you know, they want to believe that they're being told the truth? Is it because they want to have sympathy for some of these things? Why do you think that sort of seems to be human nature for a good percentage of people to just go with what the government is telling them that to me, I guess I can say should be obvious that it's not maybe as it seems. Uh, yeah, I think they're just, they're really good at it. And it's, it's the topics are always emotional and they're pushed in an emotional way. And, and most people that live in fear, um, it, it's better to believe that than to believe the, the other side of the coin that, you know, everything you watch and have been your whole life, have they've been lying to you for some other purpose or reason. Um, I just, I think it's, they're really good at it. They've been doing it a long time and they've got it quite dialed in. Like to me, I don't understand why I haven't heard really many people say like, okay, we got to find out if someone else helped with this. You know, th there's a good chance that somebody helped with this, but it could have also been, you know, incompetence on the tactical battle space or field where all this was happening. It could be either. Let's go figure it out. Instead, they're like, don't you dare listen to that guy who thinks someone was involved. Look over here. It's probably just really terrible Secret Service training, miscommunication with the police. It could happen to anyone. That's sort of what is being pushed. And they're saying, at all costs, ignore this, which I find very strange. It is very strange, especially when people like yourself and 
I forget the congressman from Florida who's a former sniper as well. Uh, Mills, I want to say. I could be wrong. Um, saying the same thing. Another person who worked in the Secret Service for 20-odd years is saying the same thing to me. I should clarify, he didn't outright say anything. He said, we need to get to the bottom of what's going on here, and there aren't enough questions being asked. And on top of that, regular people are asking common-sense questions. The water tower, the line of sight, all these simple things. Um, I think it came out that the the police were called on him by his parents as well. I also want to bring up, uh, what time was this done? About an hour and a half ago. I don't know if you've seen this yet. I'll bring it up. They finished a Senate hearing, it looks like. Senate briefing. This is from reporter Andrew DeSiderio. Let's go ahead and how should we do that? Like this. He says, Senate briefing on Trump rally shooting just concluded two uh, lines per set two senators on the call. The shooter was visited the rally site. Of, the shooter visited the rally site a few days in advance to scope it, it out. 62 minutes elapsed between the time the shooter was photographed as being suspicious and when he fired the shots. 20 minutes elapsed between the time he was spotted by snipers and when he fired the shots. FBI Director Ray said there's n no known foreign nexus, but no established motive as of now. Shooter used encrypted comms and had little to no social media presence. Dallas, the first thing that stands out to me, and I want you to tell me if this changes your mind on anything or cements your mind on anything, is we can hack Tucker Carlson's uh, telegram, but we can't get into 20-year-old guy. He he's outfoxed us, this 20-year-old guy, <laughs> with his encrypted apps. Uh, what does this change your mind on anything? Uh, no, it doesn't. I mean, if that's true, I, I'm I part of me is sort of glad that the government can't just get into your phone if they're telling the truth. But part of me also believes that they're not telling the truth because of like things like what you said. And uh, it, it's just to me, that's almost another another like, I don't know, crumb in the trail that's leading in the direction that I and thinking it is and there's so many little things that don't make sense um that it it just the more time passes the more i'm like yeah i think my initial assessment was right i want to ask you um as well about the secret service ladies everybody's you know currently picking on um i think there needs to be more focus on the two other girls i think that were doing a great job but uh, I'll save my simping. However, do you look at that and do you think there might be a DEI problem happening in the Secret Service? Well, what's the acronym mean again, just so I don't get it? Diversity, right. equity, and inclusion. So basically hiring based on, you know, gender or race so that they can reach their quotas. Oh, yeah. I think that's the stupidest thing you could do in any job that is tactical. <laughs> like, if, if a female who's of any skin color or tone is the best shooter in the group and the selection and the training and passes. Absolutely. Go work there. But like a bullet from a person trying to kill your principal. And in this case, it's the former president does not care if it's like, Oh, that's a great looking mix of people. Everyone's have been uh, equally proportionately identified that that shit doesn't matter. What matters is the mission that you have. So the best people are the ones that should be hired for it, regardless of gender, height, weight, it doesn't matter. If they can be fast and lethal and protect the person they need to protect, they should be the person for the job. Now, I know when I was in our great Canadian military, Dallas, that um, besides the fact that I had heard about you from that time, which is, God, I won't say how long ago now, um, I was around a group of snipers one time just in a hard shell shacks uh, the outdoor ones or those little plastic ones the ones that the nice oh, yeah. the nice ones <laughs> yeah yeah um and they were very reserved they were very quiet and serious seeming was that just because they were around other people or are you guys like that all the time or are you normal okay i mean i wouldn't say snipers are very normal <laughs> i i mean i'm, I'm pretty lighthearted most of the time I'm, I'm quite chill you could you wouldn't have to look very far to find a very aggressive, <laughs> quiet guy who just uh, seems like he wants everyone to leave him alone. Uh, it was the most aggressive group of individuals I've ever worked with. Uh, 
but a lot of that was put to good use when it was, you know, always pushing to be better, shoot further, fight harder, all of that stuff. So, um, but it was, it was pretty uh, diverse actually. When I think about it, we had a lot of, I mean, we were all the same gender, but there was, you know, I'm a, like a Métis half breed indigenous. We had guys that were short and tall and brown and white and, we had a pretty good mix, but everyone was generally pretty aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found, and I tell people this all the time, and and one of my buddies who is in as well, y- there's almost like one specific personality trait to each trade. Like I was an engineer, that was depression, I think, due to the being driven into the ground. Um, you know, I won't call my art- my uh, armored friend drunks, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on to us, I saw in one of your videos um, and on your page about your music. How long ago did you are like? Would you consider yourself fully just a musician? Do you want to be? You know, you're gonna get offers, I'm sure, about being like a contributor to Fox News or something or One American News. Do you want to dabble in that, or do you want to just you know keep doing music? Uh, music is my main professional focus for me it's split right now family and music and that's about the only things uh and i'm full-time music but i'm also open to share my opinion if people want to hear it i'm I'm pretty much an open book i try to look at things with an open mind and but i also attempt to just first code it with common sense and see if it passes that test um I don't know. I've done a bunch of these interviews the last couple of days since since this Trump assassination attempt and uh, my point of view on it. I'm open to it. It's just it will. It, it's not going to overtake my focus on music. That's for sure. Get him the contract. Yeah. Infowars <laughs> TV Newswars dot com. Um, <laughs> I did an article last week about AI and music, so I wanted to get your take on this. Do you think we are reaching a point? where it's going to become like older musicians are going to start selling their likeness to to AI. So that like the one that comes to mind immediately is Ozzy because, you know, he can barely move, but, you know, he's always sounded a little digital. I think he's the perfect voice to use AI for. Do you think people are going to start selling their likeness? And to preface that, they've already done this in news. I don't know if you know who Al Michaels is, the sports broadcaster. Well, he's like been a sports broadcaster for a really long time. He's selling his voice to be used for AI for the Olympics to like NBC news. So do you think that musicians who are maybe old and tired, or maybe they just want to get more good songs with their voice out there? Do you think that's something people are going to start doing? And would you do that? Wow. I've never heard of that. I mean, Hell, if you want to extend a career and you've been at it for whatever Ozzy's been at it for 70 years or something, like, <laughs> yeah, give her. <laughs> I can't see myself doing that, but give me another 50 years and we'll chat. <laughs> there's, um, so with that article I wrote, there's a program that can make a song for you in like 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And I just typed in what I was writing the article about. It made it that fast. I think people are going to have a hard time keeping up with that, but they're already being sued. I'm told by a record label executive that they're already going after people for this. And, um, so they're making it so that they, you can't use anybody's name when you're like, cause you got to describe what type of sound you want it to do or what genre you can't use anybody's <laughs> name. So they're already suing, uh, people based on this. But, uh, what I've been told is that, uh, most artists don't want to do it. And it's cause of their, like, y- you lose some of the soul. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, totally. I think like what makes art, and artists great in my opinion is that like <clears throat> if, if they can be you know be honest about the the conduit that they are from wherever music and these ideas come from onto paper and into sound um that's where it, like for me anyway I, I feel like i relate the most with when i feel a song is genuine and true to you know the writers who wrote it and the, for the person who's singing it that's where i connect the most but I mean, if, if AI gets really good, I don't know why they couldn't do like a bunch of techno music or something, <laughs> but I don't follow DJs. So maybe they're like putting their heart and soul into these beats and I'm just not recognizing it. It's already button pressing. So I'm sure a few added buttons in there, it will eliminate the, their need for like some obscure dance artist. You know how like every techno song, just yeah. a singer you've never heard of, yeah. <laughs> that'll eliminate the need for that, I think.
while you guys are watching this amazing, if I say so, podcast between myself and Dallas Alexander, the greatest sniper in the world, I'm saying it. Check out the Patreon account at patreon.com slash uopod, where you can become a super fan for just $15 a month. That's Canadian dollars, so you're getting a huge bargain pretty much anywhere in the world. But if you want to get more bonus content, we've got some bonus streeters coming up for you in the near future. Added interviews from that event will only be available on there. You'll get to see the previous comedy podcasts and everything else that we didn't want to show you or else we couldn't show you on YouTube. Again, that's uopod.com or patreon.com slash uopod. Let's get back to the interview. Um, are you down in Texas or did I just see you wearing a Texas hat? Um, oh, so that I got that question a lot in the last few days. That's actually a hat from a bar in Canada called Crazy Horse. But, oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I played in Texas last year. It looks like I'm going to have a few shows in Texas coming up soon. So I love me some Texas. Yeah, me too. And um, I also have a Texas hat, so I think I get that look as well. I'm east of Toronto, and uh, I guess I should... I'll be um, I'll be chastised by viewers if I don't ask you about Trudeau. I think both of us being Canadian. Um, do you have a horse in the race? Are you going to support anyone specifically, or do you support Trudeau? What do you, what's the pathway out of Canada right now, or like pathway to success for Canada right now? And what do you think is the biggest problem in the country we're facing? Uh. It's in my opinion, it's taxes. Like I think it's absolutely absurd when you look at how much we're taxed, and that just drives the price of everything up, and which in turn gives people less money. Like taxes and how they're spent is absolutely mind blowing. That you can have a government sit there and be like, "We're giving X amount of billion dollars to something," but no one I know has chosen that. And then like we have everyone working so hard to give away your money on your income tax, your like tax on the house that you already purchased, the land that you already purchased. Anytime you want to get a thing upgraded, there's more fees to the government, your license and registration. It's just like it never ends with the taxes. And <clears throat> I think it, it stifles a country. And I would vote for anyone that is legitimately going to drop our taxes. Now, my opinion on Trudeau, I'd be happy if I never saw his face ever again on the news or in real life. Um, I think he's an absolute. <laughs> I, anyway, I, I'm not a big fan. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I will definitely vote not Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> Just write a line through it. <laughs> yeah. um, when you were, were you still. In the service, I don't know why I'm saying in the service. <laughs> this is not a term I would have ever used. Were you still enlisted, son? Um, when he that clip came out, when he asked, somebody in the audience asked who is a military member um, why they're not giving more money to veterans, and he was like, "They're asking for more than we can give." Do you think people? What was your reaction to that initially? I don't know if you've been asked that. And what is your thinking now that you've seen all this money go out to you know immigration and and uh, the COVID checks and to Ukraine and everything. How do you, how do you, looking back, I know it was a while ago, were you in at that time and how do you feel about it? Uh, yeah, I think I was in or I was just getting out. I've been out two years. I can't remember exactly when, but it also, I heard it and I was like, yeah, I'm not surprised he would say that. He <laughs> says dumb shit like that all the time. <laughs> it's going to be, you know, I like, you know, I'm not uh, waving a, Pierre flag, but the commercial where they show, you know, this is a street on Halifax, this is a street in wherever, and it's just now filled with homeless. The decline at which we have seen, I guess it's been what, almost nine years now or something under Trudeau? The decline has been pretty remarkable. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, I definitely agree. I yeah, know that's a leading question. Do you think that there is a pathway out of now, disagree with me if you want, but the immigration numbers that we've brought in, I think 600,000 uh, one year, then we got up to over a million. Do you think there's an easy pathway out to getting things back down in price to, you know, spreading people out a little bit? Or do you think this is something we're going to be fighting against for a long time? And again, I, I hate that I have to preface it, but I don't care if they're from Iceland or Venezuela my opinion is that there's too many people coming in. How do you feel about it? 
Uh, I, I've never had a concern about lots of people coming in. My biggest concern was always with the vetting process of people coming in. So at that rate, I don't think we can properly vet people. And I think we're going to get a lot of people that shouldn't be here. <clears throat> and I don't mean that either from a certain country. I mean, of a certain criminal background. And with numbers like that, you can't, you can't properly do it. You can't properly do security checks. You can't properly do what should be done in order to like be welcoming people into communities where, you know, I'd rather not lock my truck or my door like where I grew up, but understanding that with that many people coming in, it's going to like, we have ta- we have tons of room in Canada. Like space is not really an issue. Housing is becoming an issue with numbers like that, especially at that rate. Um, Again, I just think like if if we're going to do something like that, let's say we're going to have, um, you know, policies where, where we just kind of welcome everyone. The two things we need to do is stop wasting our tax money a bunch of other places for one, because we, we're giving it all over the world when Canada in a lot of parts is in shambles and people can't afford to live and they can't afford to buy gas or groceries. And the, the bills I was talking to Americans who come here, they're just like, I can't believe how much it costs to buy food. Just to buy food? Are you guys insane? No wonder they call us a communist country <laughs> down there. Um, yeah, I just think at, at the rate of, you know, because everyone is from somewhere else, but it's 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 not vetting, it's not properly vetting people coming from places where there are dangerous people that want to just come here. When the when I went to Texas, which was in December. The price of gas alone was just shocking. I drove around in an SUV for for five days, I think, and it cost me twenty bucks to fill up at the end of my trip. That's how drastic people don't see. <laughs> Another thing that I think is drastic that people don't get about the U.S. is, or per, I should say, the places I've been at least, the way things are planned out are not planned out nearly as poorly as they are around here. Like I'm sitting next to a window where it's a busy street and there's two lanes. And I wonder what the plan was when it happened. And I wonder why our highways can't be nice and big and off the ground like they are in the South. And I wonder why we can't, you know, not have traffic on a residential road at all points of the day. Stuff like that. Do you th- foresee a time when, you know, maybe they uh, make the 407 free and free up some of the traffic but do you foresee a time with any of our current governments where they might start you know rolling back some of these these mistakes they made and what i mean by that is you know start giving us a choice to to do what we want with our money i think i'm for a more of a system going forward where we sort of you know have some boxes we want to check do you want to contribute your dollars to this thing i would even go as far as healthcare to be completely honest do you foresee a system change that helps out the people in the near future. Do you think we're too far like entrenched in this, that these people who remain nameless in the shadows, I guess are going to not going to want to give up their power. Yeah. I think power is an interesting one, but it's funny that you mentioned the allocating tax money. Cause I talked about this just yesterday with somebody. I think that solves a lot of problems and you're going to see where people care to put their money. And now from a greasy politician side, what that also <laughs> does is it gives you insight into what people want. Instead of you assuming and having to, you know, go through all these channels where apparently they don't listen and, and waste all the tax money. We could put our taxes where we wanted to, but that also gives politicians insight to be like, oh, this is what people care about. This is what they want. And then you give them that and you'll get more votes and you could keep your stupid power. So it's actually good for both people, I think. Yeah, my friend likes to say, well, what do you want, it? What do you want, Andrew? You want the Taco Bell Road versus the Costco Road? And I say, maybe the Taco Bell Road will be nice, and I want to pay for that road. Maybe I want the shit-tier health care because I never use it, or maybe I want the nice health care. All I want is options, Dallas. And what we're getting here is you get one thing. It costs you a lot, and no matter what you do, we're going to still give your money to wherever we want. And I just don't think that people have been in a position where they've had to think about that before because housing prices weren't high. You know, grocery store items weren't overpriced. And it was a luxury that people had that they didn't have to think about these things. Now, I'll ask you this, and then I and I think I'll let you go because we're running out of time here. Do we blame... <laughs> I know this is turned from serious to so not serious, but how much do we blame on former generations you seem like a smart guy how much do we blame on the boomers how much do we blame ourselves how much are we going to blame the gen z people 
is this a matter of, you know, political acumen and people paying attention to things? Or is this something that's going to happen throughout time that we're just going to have to deal with where people, you know, aren't, aren't thinking of their best interests? I mean, I think we're not the only country dealing with problem of poor leadership and, you know, and divide and all of this stuff. And I think technology, news, social media, and the corporations that run it have become very clever all over the world. And I think that's why it's a massive problem right now. I mean, everyone is to blame. <laughs> like if, if you're out there screaming at someone else about how different you are, instead of trying to figure out a way to come together and solve this problem, because in my opinion, it's just, you can go down any rabbit holes and I'll entertain all of it, but it's simple to me as follow the money. Like when, when policies equal profit, the first people purchased are the policymakers. And, it, and we've been doing that for years and years and years as there's this big race um, for attention and people's eyeballs and social media. And the news was already doing this before that so that you can just kind of control people because when we're all fighting all over the place, it's very easy to control people that are fearful. And you're just like, well, let's give them a little bit of this and now they're going to do this. And the money just goes up. Every war we go in, every, you know, all the, the pharmaceuticals are just like, there's very few people that just aren't on a bunch of prescriptions. And the, the solution when you go to the doctor is like, oh, yeah, you have side effects of this. Perfect. Here's the one for the side effects. And it's, it, over time, it just builds up. And every single one of these, uh, you know, columns of different corporations are all who end up controlling our government anyway. Yeah, I think your point about the pharmaceuticals is exactly the same as my theory for the show The First 48. I think the guy who narks on the first guy in The First 48 is the guy that dies in the next episode. And we're on a trail of people just telling on each other and getting killed for narking on each other. That's my theory, A&E. That's how I'm working with that. Stitches get stitches. <laughs> That's right. All right. Thank you very much for doing this interview. I appreciate it. Soon to be seeing you on your own Fox News show, I think. <laughs> Don't forget who your agent is. Me. 5%, I think. Thanks for doing this. Go check out his music. Is there anything else you want to say? No. <laughs> 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 no, I don't think so. If All you right, want to book I... us, if you want to book us out there, you have a music venue. Reach out. Groceries are expensive. We'll take as many shows as we can get. <laughs> Do you know a uh, Based Records? You heard of that record company? No, I haven't. That's a specifically a company that uh, works with you know free speech artists. So maybe they're. I'm guessing you're going to expect a call from them sometime soon. That's my <laughs> prediction. Okay, I'll let you know if it happens. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Dallas. Take it easy, man. Turn it up, Jordan.